I put together the eight most important things that I learned in 2008 on how to sell our homes during a recessionary market. Now this goes for every single seller out there and most builders don't hit the nail on the head when it comes to these eight items. They might hit four out of eight, they might have six out of eight, they might hit two out of eight, but you need to hit eight out of eight in order to sell a home during a recessionary market. One of the biggest things is you need to sell a home to people that you know what they're looking for demographically. We know our demographics have to deal with empty nesters and retirees. It, they constitute for the upper middle class of home buyers that have more financial affluency to be able to purchase their second, third, and last home more times than not. So there are key components in selling them that perfect home. They don't want a massive home, typically they're downsizing. So we never build homes in excess of 2,500 square feet or thereabouts. And we always hit a three bedroom, three bathroom home for the sake of convenience. They have their master bathroom, they have the guest bathroom, and then they have the bathroom that services the other two bedrooms if they have guests or a third party that's still living with them like an older child or whatever that might be. Now, we always utilize a fluid wraparound floor plan. In those fluid wraparound floor plans, one of the biggest things is we make the homes convenient. This has taken us years to figure out. One of the things in early years is we used to get, uh, we used to do long hallways, bedrooms on the sides, and you would back homeowners into the back end of a hallway and they'd have to come all the way forward. With our wraparound fluid floor plans, it allows the house to loop in sequence where it makes it very convenient for all usability with groceries, with kids, a retiree, it doesn't matter. Which, whether you're going to your laundry room, your master bedroom, your kitchen, your living area, your entryway or your garage, you can fluidly wrap around the house in a way that is desirable by any home buyer out there. One of the big things that we do is we, we know that our demographic has stuff. If they're downsizing, three car garages have always been essential because they can park in two cars and utilize the third garage bay as storage, a workshop, or usable space that has sold our homes time after time again. So we know that that three car garage is a key component to selling to our specific demographics. Now, views and the setting of the home Although not the most important thing for most home buyers, in our demographics it is. For most of them, it's important to have a house that's situated in a fashion that sits with the most spectacular views and the most desirable areas that they can retire in because for most of them, this is their last home. To be able to sit out on a patio and sip coffee on a porch is super important to be able to relax and enjoy the home that they're gonna spend the rest of their days living in. And so we wanna make sure that we hit certain parameters that gives them those exceptional views and exceptional circumstances in every single purchase. Now, as important as this is, most people miss this one right here. Trending trim outs. Ladies and gentlemen, it's so important to stay current with the times. In spite of people's demographic age, they also are seeing what is the latest and the greatest. Think about it this way. You buy a car, it's three years old. You see the car, the body style of that car change. It has a new front end, a new grill, a new bumper, a new hood. It has the new perks and wishes with all the technology. Now you feel like your three-year-old car has trended out and you've missed out on these new technologies, hence wanting you to go out and purchase the newest, latest, and greatest automobile because of what's trending. The housing industry is exactly the same. People want what's trendy. They want to be able to go in and understand that they have the best, the latest, the greatest, all the new trends. And so it's super important that you say stay current with the trends that are to date. How do you do this? Magazines, current construction tips that you're, that you're seeing online. Most of the big builders, suppliers, they will show you exactly what's trending in the market nationwide. All you have to do is copy and duplicate into your homes and make sure that you're hitting key components and target pieces of trim out that gives people the latest trending ideas and finish outs on their homes. And last but not least, pricing. I always tell people you have to back into your homes with the right price. How do you do this? When we look for land, we don't go and look for land specifically. We look for comps that support our demographics, our business model, and the home that we're building. Once we find an area that fits the exact business model, demographics, and price that we need, we build the house to fit that demographics, that price, and that business model in that area. Hence, when we price the home, it's price to sell. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you go out and compound your success during any recessionary market.
welcome to our new home. So a few details that you guys want to go through is starts with all of the final cleaning and touch up items. One of the things that we run through is we run through the paint and the finish, final trim on the entire house. So when we run through, we wanna make sure that the painters go through, they've caulked all the windows, that they've went through and, and detailed all of the trim out, that there's not paint on window sills, that there's not stain on uh, walls, and that all of the hardware is clean. One of the big things when we are doing construction is you have multiple trades. You have drywall guys, you got painters, you got flooring guys, you got cabinet guys, you got granite guys, and all of them are, are working on top of each other. And they're working through each other's trades, some of them damaging other people's trades, some of them not. But at the end of the day, it's your product, it's your finished home. We wanna make sure that the quality represents what you want as your finished product for your end company, for your end customer to enjoy. So when we go through everything, one of the things is we just had some rain, so there's a little bit of mud and stuff on the floor from people walking through here. So one of the first things that I notice when I come through the door is that the floors need to be swept and mopped so that that way when people come through, we need to do a drop rug so that they can clean their feet off when they come to the door because presentation is everything. And so if they come through and they start damaging the grout on the floors, it starts to stain the grout. It just doesn't present itself as nice as it would if you just take care of things from the beginning. So when we go through, we look at stuff like all of the baseboard, the trim, and we wanna make sure all this stuff is trimmed out, that there's no bulges in the sheetrock and where there's maybe plumbing pipes in the walls. A lot of times it happens because when the plumbing goes into the walls, there'll be a little bulge where the pipes didn't get quite into the wall and the sheetrock gets bent right around it. Nine times out of 10, you don't notice it with a sheetrock on top of it because there's so much other stuff going on in the houses. But the second you put on your baseboards, one of the first things you notice is that there's a bulge in the wall. And so what we'll typically do is leave the baseboard off. We'll come back and cut the sheetrock. We'll put the pipes back into the wall and then we'll cover the sheetrock back up. And it's as easy as having the drywall guys come back in and repair the drywall and do final cleanup and touch-ups at the end of the house. We've had everything from missing 220 volt electric for ovens in the kitchen where we've had to cut open the back wall. Typically we won't do it in the kitchen because there'll be finished countertops and there'll be finished tile and trim out appliances that are already as part of, of the finished build out of the house. So we don't wanna go in and start ripping tile off the wall. So what we'll do is we'll go to the, the, the room right behind it. We'll cut open the sheetrock and we'll go in and repair whatever's missing uh, we'll also do that with light fixtures. If they don't center right over the top of center islands, bathrooms, or wherever we're at, we'll go back in and we'll center all that stuff. A lot of times you won't hit the nail on the head perfectly with where your fixtures sit and where your finished, uh, where, where your finished fixtures are supposed to sit over your other fixtures, your lighting fixtures over your plumbing fixtures. And so we wanna make sure that everything aligns subpar builders will just allow it to go. And you'll see this in the building trade where you'll go in, you'll look at competitors' homes and you'll see that there's a sink that sits in one spot. And I'll, come on in here, I'll show, you, I'll show you guys. And so one of the issues that you'll, you'll sometimes find is that the light itself won't fall in line right with the center of the faucet. And so this one actually didn't fall right in line. It actually sat over about 12 inches. And so the plumbing lines may have come out of the wall at one location, but when we actually center out the sinks and we put things in, we want the light fixtures to center right over the top of them. So you have to move this stuff. Now, a lot of people that haven't done construction before, they get alarmed that they may have just ruined their house because it does, they don't wanna move the light fixture over some sheetrock damage. Ladies and gentlemen, this is construction. Everything can be fixed. And so the biggest thing is get the house the way it's supposed to be because no builder's perfect. No trade carpenter's perfect. No, no trade, uh, none of your uh, trade contractors, as far as plumbers, electricians, none of them are perfect. And there's gonna be little quirks and kinks in the house that you're going to indefinitely have to take care of. Uh, so center everything the way it's supposed to be. Another thing that we ran into in this house was we ran into an issue with our garden tub. Uh, when we purchased it, we purchased it, we purchased it with an end drain on the garden tub. Now, most of them are going to a center drain. And so, when we, although we ordered it with an end drain, the tub came in with a center drain. And the problem was the tile was finished. And so we would have had a jackhammer concrete to move the pipe. And so instead of jackhammering concrete, you can do that. It's a few pieces of tile, but it's invasive and it's a lot of work. So instead, we took back the tub, 
and we just ordered a new tub. It took about two weeks to get the new one in, but we were ultimately able to get the tub that we wanted. Not quite as big as with the one we wanted, but it still fits the area well. It's small, it's quaint, it's modern, and it looks good, it's attractive. And so we were able to set her the drain onto the tub in the location that we had anticipated it in the beginning. Now, if we would not have been able to find that, we would have just simply taken out about six, seven pieces of tile. We would have jackhammered the concrete, saw cut it first, and then we would have moved the floor drain over to where we needed it for the center drain on the center mounted tub. Then we would have set the, the tile back in place, we would have cleaned it all up, then the plumbers would have came in and set that new tub right in its proper location. But we didn't have to do that. That's another final trim item that you wanna make sure that you're conscientious of. Because at the end of the day, the finished product is all that is all that matters. Now, another thing that we'll do is a lot of these modern fixtures, for sake of example, the tile guys will cut the holes just a little bit too big. And so when the tile guys cut them too big, there's gaps in here. And a lot of times they want to they want to fill them with grout and it doesn't look as attractive if you put gray grout behind this. So we actually had them pull the two tiles that were here and we had them cut the holes smaller. And when we put the finished fixture on here, what was really nice is that we were able to just caulk the, the finished fixtures and look how clean and professional that looks as a finished product. It's those little detail items that make the biggest difference when you're finishing out your build. Another issue that we, that we had, and I like to go through all of this stuff, is this was not, did not sit flat. The tile guys had the tile come up to an elevation that is about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch higher than the finished trim. So instead of setting this flat and putting the trim piece on like we see here, they actually had this sitting up at an angle so that it would match this grade to this grade and it was sitting at about a 30 degree angle and it looked absolutely horrible. So I made them rip that off, set this flat and flush and put the trim piece on here and look how much nicer those small detail items look. Look how much nicer they look as opposed to doing the alternative. Now we still have a little bit of cleanup and some caulking to do. We'll run through that and we'll get this dialed in. Now this house, we went and did a more modern look with some unique colors. We did the blue cabinets and I'll tell you guys, I have been apprehensive to, to use these, this blue color in any of the builds, but because I saw it trending so aggressively and in every single ma modern magazine that I went into, Every single one of them, I saw blue cabinets, blue cabinets, blue cabinets. And because we're in the Southwest, we typically do a cream color paint finish on the walls to match people's furnishing. And so we had the cream color painting in this room and it didn't look right. There was just something that wasn't hitting the nail on the head. And so we came back in, I had them put a little darker coat of color on the cabinets. We changed up a few things, we trimmed everything out. I thought that once we did so, it was just gonna look nicer, and it didn't. So we landed up changing the entire color scheme of the bathroom, and we did an off-white with a little bit of a gray hue to it. And with that little bit of a gray hue on that white offset, it really changed the dynamics of the bathroom, and it really made these blue cabinets pop, and this really made a big, big difference. Now, some of the trim out items that, we, that we'll run through, you wanna make sure your tile gets um, fully cleaned. We'll usually put one coat of a uh, siller on all of the shower floors and the shower walls. It, makes, it gives it a sleek finish that makes it look more uh, professionally finished, nicer, and it actually seals up the grout lines. The rock, the color comes out of it. The grout actually gets cleaned off of it once you've uh, one, run through all of it a couple times and you seal it, and it makes a big difference. And so we always use, a unique tile. You'll see on our other house when we get to that video that that one has a rustic, very unique look to it. This one actually has um, dimension to it and it has texture and dimension to it and I really liked it. We spend a little bit more on our showers um, and a tile backdrop because it sells the houses. This is the stuff that home buyers look for, predominantly, predominantly the wives. Okay, now <clears throat> we'll run through and we wanna make sure that our, our closets, for sake of example, are finished out right. The tradesmen go through these closets and they leave all their tools, all of their equipment laying all over the shelves throughout the build. And so one of the biggest issues with that, is they scrape up, they ding and they damage it. So we have the painters come back through with a little bit of wood putty, they clean up, seal and caulk everything so it's seamless. And so we'll run back through all of the closet spaces and we'll make sure that the painters 
and the finished carpenters have all their detail items in, on point so that that way the finished product to the customer looks super professional. Another thing that happens with the electrical trim out is sometimes the holes don't sit in the right spot and we'll end up with drywall damage around them. When your drywall guys come out, one thing that you want to do is make sure that they touch up any, any items that don't fit in line. Look, here's one here. This is a perfect example. So we'll end up getting this detailed out as I talk about it, I actually see it. And so we'll get this stuff uh, filled with uh, some simple putty and we'll actually get that looking really sleek for them so that that way um, professionally it looks finished and to the quality that we're that we expect out of our our product okay another detail item ladies and gentlemen super important here now we come into the laundry room and a lot of times the finished tradesmen don't ever finish off around the washer and dryer trim. You always wanna make sure that you get that stuff trimmed out. This one still needs a little bit of work. It needs to be pushed back and glued in place. So we'll go in and we'll get that stuff pushed back, glued in place. Same thing with this one. These get abused through construction. This was all done by hand. We're gonna get this looking nicer. We'll come in and we'll have them trim this so that all these cuts and jagged edges where people can cut themselves actually get rectified and trimmed and look really professional, really sleek and really nice. So we'll trim that out. Um, those little detail items are really important. The same thing goes behind the, the, the oven and the range in the kitchen. There's a box where the gas line typically comes through and they typically don't trim them out unless you ask. It's a trim out item that you have to ask them to perform, otherwise they'll miss it. And so behind the oven, the exact same thing exists. We'll go through all the sinks, make sure all the grime is, is out. Another big issue when we're building the houses is that all the tradesmen, the drywall guys, the tile guys, they'll mix their grout, they'll mix their drywall in the garage. And they'll put a piece of drywall or a piece of uh, wood down in the garage, but it typically leaves a mess on the floors in spite of them putting it down. So what we do is we come back through here, we open the garage doors, we get a water hose, and we actually scrape and wash down all the floors because when you come into the garage, one of the big things is having it look functional. Now, some homes will actually do a finished floor with epoxies. This house, we didn't use epoxies on it. Um, it didn't hit the level that we needed it to hit in order to get epoxies on the floors. Typically over a million dollars, we'll put epoxies on the garage floors. Otherwise, just clean them, make them look nice, make them look professional, make them look respectful, okay? Around the water heaters, all of the stuff that was in here was stockpiled around the water heaters. Now, sometimes we'll put doors and sometimes we'll actually just trim them out to look like this. Now, this in particular one, we trimmed out all the way, all the way around with baseboard and trim because it makes a big difference on the finished quality and the finished look of the product. And we'll go in here and have the cleaning people come in and clean around the water heaters and make sure that everything looks new. It's like buying a new car. You don't leave all the plastic and all the debris in the car. You go in, you clean all that stuff out, you, wa you wash it, you wax it. So when you present it to your end buyer, they're appreciative and feeling good about what they purchased. Same thing with a home buyer. You wanna go in, clean this stuff out so it just looks crisp, clean, and professional. And so that's what we'll do around the water heaters to make sure. Now, we'll pull all the excess material. We still have to sort through this stuff. And the paint will always leave the excess paint. The excess construction material we'll always get rid of. We'll take back all of our flooring, all of the excess, uh, all the excess flooring, all the excess uh, bagged goods that are still closed, we'll return all of that stuff. We'll always leave the homeowners with one or two pieces of finished tile so they can utilize it to take to the drape store, the furniture store, whatever they need to be able to finish and complete their, their, the end product of their home. Let's come inside and let's take a look at a few more items before we wrap this up. So let's come in and take a look at this Jack and Jill bathroom. I'm gonna show you guys something that happened with this one that we always wanna pay attention to. So I like full and complete glass. Um, one of the things that I love most about our custom showers, we still have the painter has to come through and touch this type of stuff up. So we'll get the painter to come in and touch these type of details up. But this transom glass wasn't up here. And one of the big things is this, this looked unfinished. It looked like the, the glass was cut too short for the door opening. So we typically will spend an extra 50, 70, $80 to get a custom fit glass door in on our finished product so that that way it just looks absolutely perfect. This one, they missed it. They bought a standard size door 
and there was a gap up here and it looked unfinished. So as an alternative, we came in, we put a transom window up here and I actually like it. It came out really nice. It's really attractive and you can actually let the steam out. Now this shower is pretty unique in, in itself. If you guys come in here and you look, we have 16 foot ceilings in here, ladies and gentlemen. And in this 16 foot ceiling, there's some touch up paint that has to get done on that ceiling. We'll have the tile guys address that as well. So one thing that we'll do in the, around the, the laboratories is we'll make sure that the toilets are always caulked and sealed and clean, cleanly grouted right around the toilet. We wanna make sure that the finished product always looks attractive. Now on the baseboard, ladies and gentlemen, one of the things that we'll do on the baseboard, one of the things that we'll do on the baseboard when we do tile is we'll just run a really thin layer of grout. One thing that you'll find is a lot of tile setters will run the grout really thick and ugly right up against the, the tile and the paint and it looks really, it's really not attractive. So one of the things that we do is once the tile is set and we use the baseboard, we, we pull the grout really tight and clean in here and it just looks a lot more professional. I always say that when they do that, it reminds me of a subpar hotel, something like an old Motel 6 and Old Days Inn, nothing against those, those brands and those flags, but they're just the more inexpensive hotels and motels that are out there. And I don't want my, my finished product on my custom home to look like a Motel 6 or a Days Inn or a Super 8 with all due respect. I want it to look like an exotic, finished, well sought after, clean, professional product at the end of construction. So we, we're keeping all that in mind to make a more finished, more professional product. Come on here while we finish up some of the detail items on the house. Um, one thing that the painters do is they miss the corners on the windows. And we still have a little bit of touch up to do on some of these windows, but some of the detail that they'll miss is they don't finish caulking all the windows. The finished trim around the paint needs to be cleaned up. Um, the vinyl windows and stuff need to be cleaned out a little bit more professionally. And so we'll come in and we'll hit all these details to make a more professionally finished, high quality product at the end of construction. Um, the carpet and stuff is usually pretty easy, but we'll come back in after the carpet is set, make sure that the baseboards are all caulked, sealed, painted, and full product is fully delivered. Um, we'll run through all of our finished light fixtures, make sure all the screws are in them, they're not missing any screws. One thing that we have here that we need to get our door guys back out on is, is we have a cracked door and this door doesn't quite open smoothly. So we will have them come in and figure out what needs to be done with this door in order to get this door either replaced or finished out the way it's supposed to. Okay, so go through and just make sure that everything mechanically is working the way it's supposed to. Fireplaces, trim, landscaping, cleanup is all very important. This one here, we'll go in and we'll fire up the fireplaces. We'll make sure that the, uh, we'll make sure that the fireplace company comes out trims out the fireplace. So when we, when we come in and we actually do the finished product on the, uh, on the tile and stuff, we wanna make sure all the grout is finished off, the fireplace is working and everything's fully functional. Um, typically what we'll end up doing is we'll hire a third party home inspection company before we sell. And one of the things that I like to do is I like to pay the four or $500 to a third party, non-biased home inspection company to come out and run through all our systems, all of our appliances, all of the mechanical items on the house itself, and then run and make sure that everything on the rooftop, everything on the exterior perimeter, everything on the interior of the house is functional and in compliance and up to par with finished building codes. In spite of getting your finished certificate of occupancy, one of the biggest things that's cut back on customer complaints, one of the biggest things that's cut back on customer callbacks is that inspection. We'll get the home buyer's inspection. We'll run through all of the items that the home buyer's inspector comes back with, and then we'll highlight them. We'll break them down by trade. We'll send off emails and fo follow up with phone calls to every single trade contractor. And then we get them back in here before the home buyers actually move in the house. And we'll actually have them run through all these items, get them repaired and taken care of prior to them moving in. That way it saves the hassle of trying to schedule with a third party home buyer to get in and get these items repaired. So we'll cut back on about 90 
90% of all of our warranty items just by that one simple process. It's worth the investment. It's worth the headache and the ha it saves you the headache and the hassle long term. And so it's a, a punch list item that I encourage every single builder to do in spite of the, the price and the expense because a few hundred dollars is worth the investment, especially when you're making six figures plus on a house just like this. Ladies and gentlemen, we have documented the entire process from start to finish on how to buy land, build houses, and we're projected to make over $209,000 net profit on this house right here. We're projected to close on it in less than 30 days from now, and I just wanted to come in before we actually sold the house and give you guys the final opportunity to view the finished product of everything we were doing. Take a second and take a look at everything that we've put together from video one all the way to the final completed product. Enjoy the finished product.